Well, here we are, another week lays on before us. It is Monday, the 20th day already, ladies and gentlemen, of January 2014. And we are going to be live here for the next three hours, Lord willing. Wow, there is a lot to cover. Uh, former governor of New Mexico, Gary Johnson, is going to be in studio with us in the next hour. And then we have open phones uh, after that. In fact, I intend to go to your phone calls uh, in this hour uh, as well. But I tell you, where to start? There is just so much news that needs to be gotten into. Uh, dealing with the economy, dealing with the Obamacare website. Uh, cracked in just four minutes at healthcare.gov. Uh, there's a story up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. DHS gave Muslim Brotherhood VIP treatment, no TSA pat-downs. They got to bypass TSA completely. And this is what happens with basically all the diplomats, all the UN people. They're now giving diplomatic immunity to a bunch of the big mega banks to operate however they want. And that's why the ruling establishment and their minions don't care about the oppression, the police state, and the rest of it, because they're exempt from all of it. They're exempt from the taxes, the regulations. It's incredible. That is the essence of the New World Order. And look, this is a clash between civilizations that Dick Cheney wrote about, where they get the West fighting with the Muslims, the Muslims fighting with the West. I'm not here even demonizing Muslims in general, but it's undoubted that radical Islam is being funded, protected, shepherded, uh, deployed, and green-lighted by criminal elements in the West as a pretext to take over society, and that can't be debated. So I want to open the phones up for everybody, but particularly uh, TSA-type folks, uh, FBI people, police, you name it. I mean, all this claim of security is to stop the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, Muslim Brotherhood type folks. But every time we turn around, like with the 9-11 hijackers, they're given national security clearances and trained at U.S. military bases. I mean, that came out in the Associated Press and our double agents, bare minimum, being protected. And the head of the U.S. Embassy says that they let them into the country. Under orders, I've interviewed Springman, the head of the U.S. Embassy visa section. Uh, and the year before 9-11, they weren't going to let in Muhammad Atta and a bunch of the other reported hijackers who'd been in and out of the U.S. They were listed as terrorists, and they said, oh, that's just their cover. Let them in. I mean, there's something going on here, and it's called false flag. It's called staged event. So we're going to be breaking down this huge story uh, as well here on the broadcast today. And we've also got uh, news emanating uh, out of China that's up on Infowars.com right now. And the news uh, out of uh, China is that they are preparing and seriously debating and saying that they are going to invade uh, islands off the coast of the Philippines. So the Filipino Navy is uh, beefing up, causing an arms race and gearing up for that. Uh, so it, it literally just goes on and on what's happening. It, it, it is a totally and completely uh, insane world that is that is unfolding right now. CIA-connected terror group issues threat ahead of Russian Olympic Games. That's Infowars.com. Expert China preparing to test U.S. aircraft carriers to target them. Uh, warfare, welfare, and Wonder Woman, how Congress spends your money, Ron Paul. DHS gave Muslim Brotherhood VIP treatment, no TSA pat-downs. Well, they bypass security entirely. And what I just mentioned, Philippine Navy adds to regional arms buildup of China. Words and deeds escalate. Germany has recovered a paltry five tons of gold from New York Fed after one year demand for the entire hoard to be returned that's well known to have already been sold. All this and more coming up today and former governor of New Mexico, Gary Johnson in studio. It is Monday, the 20th day of January, 2014. I am your host, Alex Jones. And we are going to be live here for the next three hours today. Former governor of New Mexico, Gary Johnson, is going to be in studio in the next hour. You know, uh, last Friday, uh, the governor of New York, uh, Cuomo, came out and said, quote, if you are a pro-lifer or a uh, gun owner, a Second Amendment activist, you are not welcome in New York State. 
you are an extremist. New Yorkers don't think like that. We don't put up with that. So see, that's liberal and open to say we don't want people in this state that are pro-life or that are pro-Second Amendment. That's authoritarianism taking a moral high ground and basically trying to bully everyone and trying to run everyone out of the state so they can fully take over. It is simply amazing to see things like that. And now we have a video coming up. Watch Common Core as they instruct educators to teach all right-wing extremist groups are fascist. Teachers discuss how Common Core curriculum is not only massively failing our youth, but teaching them the right wing is fascist. Folks, it's pure divide and conquer. This is fascism. And to teach someone two plus two equals five, or to teach six-year-olds about sexual intercourse is, is, is pedophilia. This is the state trying to go for broke. This is the state and the people that animate it getting away with bloody murder. Though most people I talk to that work in state and federal government are completely freaked out and actually know what's going on. You've got a lot of trendies and people right out of college or in college or in high school that still think all this is cool and normal and they're part of some winning team. And the polls show that only people under 25 or so are still in favor of Obamacare. And they're going and signing up thinking they're even signing up. All they're doing is putting themselves in a database and then they're finding out when they go in to get health care that they're not in it. So it is a plan to bankrupt uh, the country. And speaking of Obamacare... Hacking expert David Kennedy says he cracked healthcare.gov in four minutes. The man who appeared before Congress last week to explain the security pitfalls of the healthcare.gov took to Fox News on Sunday to explain just how easy it is to penetrate the website. Hacking expert uh, David Kennedy told Fox's Chris Wallace that gaining access to 70,000 personal records of Obamacare enrollees via healthcare.gov took about four minutes and required nothing more than a standard browser, the Daily Caller reported. That's out of the Washington Times. Now, continuing uh, here, DHS gave Muslim Brotherhood VIP treatment, no TSA pat-downs. And that story is on the left-hand side of DrudgeReport.com. If you want to find it the easiest way, it's uh, now scrolled down on Infowars.com to be the fourth story in the featured news. We should probably red link that. Because this is the type of story that will really wake people up to the fraud of the TSA. They didn't just skip the naked body scanners or the genital gropers that Congressman Ron Paul wasn't even able to skip when he was in Congress. Though I've been at the airport and seen Al Gore in Minnesota just walk right through security when he wasn't even vice president. Just, oh, hello, vice president. Oh, yeah, right through. But then I go and they go, oh, hi, Alex, heard your show yesterday. You're not going to fly unless I do a pat down. Yeah, I heard you talking yesterday about it as he caresses the inside of my leg. I mean, this is ridiculous. Oh, hi, Miss USA. Yeah, we're going to go in your pants. Oh, hi, you're a TV star. We're going to go in your pants. But, oh, your government, you're above the law. And this is the, the very heart of the discrimination of the New World Order, where the corporate and governing class are above the law with diplomatic immunity, hundreds of different flavors of that, selective enforcement, Above the regulations, above the laws, above the taxes, that's the new world order is a bunch of mega corporations and lobbyists coming out with their own global strategic drawing rights, special drawing rights and other systems, derivatives, total fraud, and they've bought off the militaries, the think tanks, the universities, the media, the whole system with Ponzi scheme frauds. Bernie Madoff burned a bunch of billionaire globalists, so he was sent to prison uh, for going after insiders, just like the Wolf of Wall Street was. But if you look at what's happening today, they bring in the Muslim Brotherhood that's running Al-Qaeda all over the Middle East, attacking uh, Christians in mass all over the Middle East and Africa, burning up hundreds of churches in Syria and in Egypt. And here's the story by Paul Joseph Watson. DHS gave Muslim Brotherhood VIP treatment no TSA pat-downs, a newly released document obtained via a Freedom of Information Act request confirms that the State Department ordered the Department of Homeland Security to spare members of the Muslim Brotherhood traveling to the U.S. in 2012 a TSA pat-down or any kind of secondary screening. The one-page document obtained by the investigative 
project on terrorism shows that members of the Muslim Brotherhood delegation traveling through Minneapolis Airport, New York's John F. Kennedy Airport and Dulles Airport were uh, handed expedited entry known as port courtesy, which is normally reserved for high-ranking government officials and dignitaries. At the time, the Muslim Brotherhood candidate, Mohammed Morrissey, later deposed, had not been elected president. The document contains four separate entries, which include a directive that the Muslim Brotherhood members not be pulled into secondary screening upon arrival at the point of entry, as well as TSA pat-down. Secondary screening involves carry-on luggage being inspected by hand and the use of puffer explosive detectors. By the way, uh, if you look this up from three years ago, Saudi Arabians, period, do not get searched or touched. And their women don't get touched, and they don't have to take their uh, their headdresses off. And, and it's just amazing that you have no free speech in England to speak of or in Europe now, unless you're a Muslim saying you want to kill Christians, Jews, and other people. And again, folks, I've been critical of Israel. But, I mean, I sit here and I look at this just because people don't like a lot of the stuff Israel's doing, and I don't like some of it, and I've been critical it, it doesn't mean then just because Israel does bad stuff that then everyone else is good and you've got to then accept whatever they want and they're the moral authority and then we can't have movies come out and stuff because Saudi Arabia says so and Saudi Arabia is funding radicals all over the world and then our government uses the Saudi Arabian funded threat to take our rights. I mean, can't you see what's happening here? A false flag. A cultural clash of civilizations that is absolutely disgusting and out of control. Another entry reads, MB delegate departure in response to request from MB, the desk work with the foreign missions to arrange the TSA to escort the last member of the visiting MB delegation, Abdul Magwad Dargety, through security at Minneapolis Airport and JFK Airport, April 15th. We did not hear anything further, the MB, so we assume the departure went smoothly. In the coming days, we're going to write down a list of procedures for dealing with MB visits to the United States. The, de the delegate was given privileged access despite one of their meetings being linked to a previous child pornography investigation in the United States. In addition, the Muslim Brotherhood, which has now been declared a terrorist organization by the Egyptian government after bombing a police headquarters last month, is closely affiliated with Al-Qaeda and has long been cited as a foundational inspiration for both Al-Qaeda and Islamic Jihad. The IPT also highlights the fact that individuals traveling from Syria to give speaking tours in the United States, people like Sheikh Osama al-Rafi, that has openly endorsed al-Qaeda militant groups under the banner of the Islamic Front, are being handed visas by the State Department with no questions asked. While completely innocent, Americans continue to be subjected to invasive TSA grope down procedures and placed on no-fly list for no reason whatsoever. Members of a group with direct links to terrorism were given VIP treatment by the State Department, the TSA, and the Department of Homeland Security. And don't forget what happened in the three weeks after 9-11, where more than 15 flights flying the entire bin Laden family were allowed. A bunch of them the first two days when all air traffic was grounded. And that was in the Miami Herald and CBS News. But I would talk about it and have neocon groups say I was a liar. And that none of this happened. And it just goes on and on and on and on. And if you're not an illegal alien or a Saudi national or Al-Qaeda, you have no rights. But if you are, then you have all the rights. Back when I pointed out that criminal elements of our government helped found Al-Qaeda and the Taliban Back in 1979, Zbigniew Brzezinski and Jimmy Carter, but it continued under Reagan. I want to hear from those out there that said I was wrong about uh, 15 of the 19 hijackers being given national security passes uh, to come into the United States, despite the fact they were on terror list. That was in the Toronto uh, newspapers. That was in the BBC. I'd like to hear from those of you that said I was wrong about radical Islam being funded, supported, and protected by our government. Before Barack Obama, though now on Obama, you could see the pre-setup and, and building towards this with the globalist banksters use the Muslim threat to take our liberties domestically and to build up a police state and a military against it while actually funding it, 
and protecting it the whole time and then making trillions every decade off of no bid contracts in Iraq, Afghanistan, the list goes on and on, not fighting the Al Qaeda people, but actually fighting anyone that resists a takeover. And then they just put the Taliban and Al Qaeda in charge after, after our soldiers basically take out the locals. And I've talked to General Hamid Ghul, Major General, former head of all Pakistani military who worked with the CIA. He says that that's exactly what's going on. And that's really mainline history now. But it's so over the top. How do you, how do you explain that to people that can't even find Afghanistan on a map? I mean, how do you do that? How do you explain that to people? And it just doesn't matter uh, the way the police are being trained, the way the TSA acts, barking orders, yelling at people. It's all about you're a suspect. Your baby's diaper's a suspect. Uh, your uh, nail clippers are suspect. Uh, your your two ounce bottle of shampoo is suspect. You know you, we're all bad. We're all guilty until proven innocent. None of us have any rights. We're going to be naked, body scanned. But then. Anybody coming in out of Saudi Arabia is above the law and nobody dares search them. Because there is no real terrorist threat. Folks, the underwear bomber was drugged up by the CIA. That all came out. That's on record. That came out in congressional testimony. And put on the plane with a firecracker in his pants. And because of a firecracker in his pants, land of the free home of the brave, we have naked body scanners and TSA and, and the TSA with the NSA scans your records and data mines before you even show up before you even come to the airport. When you go to give them your insurance, it runs through PRISM and, and, and the NSA and into an Obamacare database. I mean, there's just, it's a revolution against we the people. It's a revolution against checks and balances for the establishment. It's a revolution of where they're completely empowered to do whatever they want, and have all the new technology and all the life extension and all the travel and all the perks and all the lavishment and all the commodious trappings of power, the red carpets, the, the private paid for taxpayer jets, the diplomatic and cultural immunity. And then it even extends to the Muslim Brotherhood, you know, thousands of them in different delegations coming in above the law. And I've been at the airport many times, and you'll watch somebody in a full Muslim outfit, headdress, whole deal. They just, they never secondary screen them. And again, I know it's all made up anyways. I mean, the real terror threat that's there is synthetic predominantly. Doesn't mean there isn't a woman who gets mad about being, you know, segregated and treated bad in, in the West Bank or something, or gets in as a maid in Israel and takes a butcher knife on a bus and stabs 15 people. That's, and kills five of them. That's a crime of passion. That's real. For a woman to be angry enough and have the strength to stab 15 people, killing quite a few of them. No, that's a real attack. And that's tribal warfare. It's not terrorism. And if you're Israeli, you think it's horrible. If you're Arab, you think it's great. Just like when an Israeli goes and shoots up a mosque, a bunch of Israelis praise it. And when a Muslim goes and shoots up a synagogue, a bunch of Muslims praise it. It's all just tribal warfare. Here's the deal. I'm not Israeli. I'm not Arab. Okay? I mean, I, I see from the outside like the globalists do... As they play everybody off against each other, and it's disgusting. Off the regular price. When you sign up to see the nightly news in high quality, the documentary films, my book, Paul Watson's book, uh, the special reports, so much there. You're funding the very tip of the spear in the First Amendment. So please, if you're not a prisonplanet.tv or infowarsnews.com member, please become a member today. It takes about a minute to do it. Create an original username and passcode. And you can share it with up to 11 friends and family who can log in simultaneously to prisonplanet.tv and have the commercial free audio and video podcast and so much more, prisonplanet.tv. Again, that's prisonplanet.tv. And you can check that out via infowars.com and prisonplanet.com. And lastly... We did get more of it in last week. It is set to sell out in the next few days. Um, we're probably going to get more in in the next week. The point is, if you want to get your high-quality, original, proprietary, nascent iodine with its own National Academy of Sciences you know, certified proprietary system, we have it. 
It's the only place to get it. It has done wonders for my shelf, wonders for my family, with all the increasing radiation on the West Coast across the nation. That's why I'm own research to protect myself and my family. I ran into this with the scientists and doctors and medical doctors and nutritionists and said, well, this is the biggest you know, kept secret out there. So that's why we've come out with Survival Shield, truly nascent iodine. And it just has done so much for myself. It goes right into the bloodstream. It's not bound like other iodines. Uh, there's a video that breaks that down and more uh, at InfoWarsLife.com. And then there's the fluoride shield. It's in a double size bottle. And, I, and it's just really an amazing development with five different compounds known to supercharge the iodine that's also in the fluoride shield. But the five other ingredients uh, that helps detoxify fluoride uh, and ha other uh, halogens and heavy metal, boring, you name it. That's all available at InfoWarsLife.com. And then if you want to find all the great longevity products discounted and get free shipping with auto ship and things like that, InfoWarsHealth.com for the great Beyond Tangy Tangerine and upwards of 400 other great products. That's InfoWarsHealth.com. And you can always call toll-free if you have any questions or comments or want to order via the phone. It's 888-253-3139-er. That's 888-253-3139. And again, um, also InfoWarsStore.com, you can find all the great films, books, T-shirts to promote liberty, meet like-minded people, and all of your purchases make this broadcast possible. We're not funded like MSNBC with bailout money and stimulus money. We're not funded like NPR with taxpayer money and Rockefeller stolen money. We're funded by viewers and listeners like you who believe in liberty. And we don't put a gun to your head like the IRS and take the money and give it to the private Federal Reserve to wreck the nation. We just simply put out high-quality products, carry the very best products and the very best books and films on every subject you can imagine to help edify and inform the public. So, again, thank you all for your support. That's how we're able to do this, so I salute you. Now, getting back uh, into the news, uh, in the backdrop of what is coming out uh, with the top story on Infowars.com with DHS gave Muslim Brotherhood VIP treatment, no TSA pat downs, let them skip screening, secondary screening. Olympic terror dragnet, Russia hunts as many as four black widows. And those are uh, Al Qaeda, State Department funded on record uh, groups infiltrating Russia. Uh, the head of Saudi intelligence, as you know, three months ago, threatened the Russians face to face in a meeting with them. This was on Russian television, and Saudi Arabia admitted it. They said, if you don't stop defeating our forces with advisors and weapons in the takeover of Syria, we're going to attack the Russian uh, Winter Olympics. And that has now already begun with all the bombings you've seen, and they're now hunting, hunting the Black Widows. And again, folks, you could say, oh, well, Putin's doing this as a false flag. Putin's been reelected. Putin's never been more popular as a strong man, uh, as a pro-family uh, guy. I mean, he's, he's a tyrant by many yardsticks, but... Comparing him to Obama, he's like an angel cake or something. I mean, it's, it's, I've never been a big fan of Vladimir Putin. People know that. <sighs> Clearly, when he was vice president and unpopular to get elected as Boris Yeltsin's uh, uh, KGB handler, there's evidence that they bombed apartment buildings. Moscow, or a suburb of Moscow police caught FSB, Federal Security Bureau, uh, police planting uh, hexogen bombs in the fourth building. And then said, oh, it was part of a drill. So there's a lot of evidence uh, that Pooty Poot uh, was involved in some false flags to get elected president. If you look at the timing, people even got caught. He wasn't going to get elected. Made him look popular going in while Yeltsin was, you know, unable to speak drunk on drugs or whatever. Remember how Yeltsin was uh, going down into Chechnya and, and, and routing out uh, the real terrorists that were there. And you can argue the Russians blew up some stuff to get Russian will behind it. So it wasn't just some far off place in the countryside being attacked. It was major suburbs of Moscow. I forget the city out south of Moscow. Look up the Russian 1999 bombings and tell me what city it was. I'm going to give folks the name. The point is, I made a film about it. It's in um, my film, Masters of Terror. We break all that down that came out uh, in 2000, 2002. Uh, so there is uh, that information. So I'd like to hear from everybody because you look at these new cases, this is not the Russians. Putin's popular. He's been reelected. He's getting whatever he wants. They're paying people to have more children and build families. They've taken fluoride out of the water in the few cities that had it. They're 
on the news talking about eugenics and the Western plan for world government. I mean, basically, the Russians are starting to really get it. And uh, again, the Russian apartment bombings were a series of explosions that hit four apartment blocks in the Russian cities of, how do you pronounce that? Binoska, Binox, Moscow, and Volodovsk. So again, they hit, they hit Moscow as well. The point is, that was clearly all the earmarks of government false flag. These new ones, the situation with the Olympics, Russia stands to make five, six, seven, eight billion. The, the, the numbers are very, whether it's dollars or euros, it gives them a lot of attention. It builds them up as the idea of an international center. It's something their economy needs, tourism. It's a stage for Russia. And if they can activate uh, radical Islamic Al-Qaeda jihadis in those areas, which they've already done, it will certainly destabilize Russia further, which is the State Department plan. In fact, the supposed Boston bomber, uh, Tamerlan, the older brother, the one that got killed mysteriously, he was on record funded by the State Department to go into that country and to work in Chechnya and other areas uh, with these very groups that are now bombing him was clearly at least a double agent and who was protected. So Obama needs a political diversion, Al-Qaeda hits. They need to destabilize the Russians, Al-Qaeda hits. They want to take down Syria, Al-Qaeda hits. They want to take down Libya, Al-Qaeda hits. They want to destabilize Iraq again, Al-Qaeda activates and starts destabilizing. Chaos is the name of the game. So I want to hear from you out there. What do you think about this? Does this anger you? And what do you think about the Muslim Brotherhood that's attacked military bases, police stations, helicopters, hundreds of churches uh, in um, Egypt? Uh, absolutely the worst, the worst group over there. Uh, caught with uh, Obama's cousin and others, according to the Egyptian newspapers, laundering money uh, in through the State Department into uh, Egypt. I mean, literally, it's like they're using Obama, Barack Hussein Obama, tailor-made to lead a Muslim jihad in the Middle East against secular and uh, more moderate states while using those threats as a domestic reason to take our rights. And I know I keep restating that. It's just so incredible to actually watch it nakedly happening. Here's the toll-free number to join us. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. And the Twitter is real Alex Jones. If you want to send any comments there, and guys, print me off any comments that come in on the Twitter in case I miss them to give one-line comments on what people think out there as well. 800-259-9231. And we will uh, take your calls on that front. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia's real enemy is, is Iran. And Iran really is a true rogue state in the globalist view who is not controlled by them. Al-Qaeda, Saudi Arabia is, is, is in deep with the globalists going back to British intelligence in 1903 on record. And it's a small conquering tribe they've used out of Saudi Arabia to take over most of the Middle East. But in the case of Iran, Iran already has nuclear weapons. The word is, and you notice that's coming out now, uh, from the Pakistanis, from the Russians and others. They really do want peaceful centrifuges. You really can't make nuclear weapons uh, with what they've got. But Iran is basically in a game of brinksmanship with the West. And once they've taken out Syria on Israel's flank, they will end up, trying to have a big war with Iran, and that could be the next big shooter drop. But they want to act like, oh, we're doing deals with you, oh, we worked with you. So they can then turn around and make it look like it's okay when they get into a war with Iran. And, and let me be clear here, whether you're Syria, Iran, Israel, Saudi Arabia, there is no purely good guy or bad guy in any of this. It's a bunch of political classes trying to build their own empires. Uh, the Iranians want their Shiite empire. The uh, Saudi Arabians want their Wahhabist empire. Israel wants to play the groups off against each other to destabilize them so Israel can expand its interest. And it's all just being done cold-bloodedly. And while all these governments battle with each other, we the people, I don't care if you're Christian, Jewish, Muslim, agnostic, animist, Zoroastrian, whatever it is, we're stuck in the middle. While, as the Economic Times reports, 
World's 85 richest people own nearly half of global wealth, Oxfam reports. Davos, a tiny elite comprising the richest 85 individuals, hold wealth equivalent to that owned by the bottom half of the world's population, report says. It's much worse than that. And folks, these are the very groups to a person. If you go research these 85, almost all of them, when you, look, when you read the names, are funding socialism, big government, deindustrialization, because they've already got their wealth. They want you poor and easy to control, politically weak and dumbed down. Cloud and Piven, one example of that. Dependency. And so they're all above the law, diplomatic corporate immunity. They're getting the corporate bailouts. They're getting the corporate money. They're the ones funding socialism on the grassroots because they're exempt offshore and already stole the wealth. They don't want new competition coming up. That's what elites do throughout history. That's what, quote, nobles do, royalty does. Oligarchies try to cement the classes, get rid of the middle class, create a tiny upper class, which then wages war through the underclass that's swelling against the tiny merchant middle class that doesn't want to be slaves and is intelligent. They want to own us. This is slavery. And they hate anybody they don't control. It's like veterans. They fear veterans. That's why they're the number one enemy in all the Homeland Security documents. This is an open, alien, illegal, seditious group. Let's go to Robert in California. What is your take on the literal Al-Qaeda light, known Al-Qaeda, uh, connected affiliated groups, it's all proven in the article, being allowed through the TSA screening over and over again uh, at airports all over the United States. I mean, we already knew this was going on, but, I mean, this just shows how the whole thing's a fraud. Yes, uh, can you hear me, Alex? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, I understand your issues on TSA and all the um, uh, things that are going on. And I find it really hypocritical that the TSA and Homeland Security and our no such agency, the NSA, would actually, as you were saying uh, on your last show, that they bypass um, Saudis and let them get in front of the line and really don't search them as much when the hijackers on 9-11 are well known to be from Saudi Arabia themselves. And the fact that I was, I, I, I'm, I, I've worked for defense for many years and I've been doing a lot of things in uh, pretty too much to list probably on your show right now, but one of the main reasons I, I called up today is to let you know of a technology that's connected with Homeland Security that, the, the, I don't know if you probably don't, I'm totally unaware of this, but the YF-22 plane, okay, is part of when they come to do, do, do the raids on the House of Homeland Security, they plan on, the YF-22 has an adapted device. It's called a popper. It flies over a city, and it sets a radio saturation signal, and it opens garage doors, opens for Homeland Security to raid houses through the garage doors. You can see this when we're testing it out in, 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 the, in the desert. People in all the neighborhoods, garage doors, are videotaped. It's all the garage doors. Oh, yeah, no, that, that happened time. three years ago, and then again two years ago. We're all over the country when they test it. It opens the garage doors and they said that was a malfunction are you saying that's what it's meant to do it's meant to do that for homeland security to enter your house through the garage door armed forces at three in the morning to confiscate uh, weapons so that's you're telling me you worked for them and you had firsthand knowledge that that's not a malfunction that that, that no. they're testing opening our garage doors that's right. It's part of that Homeland Security vehicles have the same technology, but the Y-22 could fly over it at extremely high speed and, and open hundreds of garage doors rather than have it set into Homeland Security. Can you imagine what they're going to do when all the doors are digital they're going to and all of your appliances are spying on you and they just dial in and, and open up your webcam and watch you? This is all admitted now. I mean, could, where do you think this is going? And, and are other people that work for a big defense contractor companies, are they aware of what's happening? Um, some aren't, some aren't. Some say it's experimental technology that they, they really don't want to um, uh, get rumors spreaded. So a lot of the stuff they say is just experimental. And uh, sometimes they say, well, it's a byproduct um, of uh, the technology. But it's all designed in, in covert. Basically, the Pentagon has a lot to do with this. And, uh, you know, I tell a lot of the men and women in the Pentagon, when you're sitting down, they have a lot of think tanks in the Pentagon. And the government asks for them to design hypothetical situations. And uh, that's what they do in the Pentagon. They just file these hypothetical situations in case we run into a certain situation, then we can break out that file and implement it. And I like to tell you, tell, tell the people in the Pentagon that guess what? That hypo hypothetical situation of 9-11, guess what? They put you all in one part of the building, we threw a missile into it, and we put your family members on airplanes and killed you. Everybody who's in these hypothetical programs, when they go lie, 
live before they activate it, they kill. Sure, all sure. That's why the Pentagon, uh, 10 years before, two years before, a year before, six months before, and a month before, had drills of the exact same thing happening the exact same way it did, and then ran the drill that day. So NORAD stood down. This just came out in the congressional testimony and thought it was part of the drill. And so they used those off the shelf uh, drills. And, and those tabletop war games, the guys don't even know the best brains when they play the part of terrorists and infiltrators. They're actually building a roadmap to then be given to operatives to carry out the plan. You think you're coming up with a what-if scenario. You're really developing a war plan. You're absolutely right. Great point, sir. All right, Derek in FEMA Region 4, we're coming to you next. Then Paul, Mouse Link, Catherine and others. And then coming up, former governor of New Mexico, Gary Johnson, is going to be in studio to cover the waterfront with us and more. I'm Alex Jones. Check out that story on InfoWars.com and DrudgeReport.com. On the left-hand side, Homeland Security gives Muslim Brotherhood VIP treatment, no TSA. And we the people have to admit that this is happening if we have any chance to turn it around. We're talking about the fact that not just on 9-11 was the Bin Laden family allowed to fly out of the country in more than 15 flights while all other air traffic was grounded. But now we learn the Muslim Brotherhood at airports all over the U.S. gets to skip the TSA screening and actually physically get led through as VIPs. This is a listed terror group. But then meanwhile, when you go up to the TSA people, they treat you like you're a terrorist. It's all about making you feel guilty and learning to be treated bad by government. It's Pavlovian psychological warfare, re-education in their own words. You're being nudged into submission. And it's our job to start saying no, folks. Derek from FEMA Region 4. Uh, what former state are you in under FEMA Region 4, sir? That'd be Tennessee, Alex. All right, former state of Tennessee. Go ahead. I don't know who I'm mad at. The TSA or the people that won't believe what's going on. Two, three, no, three years ago now, I got popped going through the Nashville airport. It cost me about 5000 to get out of that. And it's all for a big PSYOP. And... Uh, it's just, it's ridiculous is what it is. You mean you got popped? Did you forget and bring something through you weren't supposed to? No, no. I kind of uh, <clears throat> mouthed off about there might be something in my little half-inch thick rubber sandal that I had on. And uh, they didn't think Oh, yeah, they love me. that. They love falsely charging you, saying you made a threat with intent to cause alarm. And then your lawyer tells you to uh, basically plea bargain it when we need to just take all this to court and prove it's all a fraud and just say it was a joke. Now they're saying criticizing them is a felony and you'll be arrested. So, so but, it, but it's okay. You just should have been a terrorist and it would have been okay. This whole thing with this, with your article about the Muslim Brotherhood getting flagged through there, that's just, that just boiled me today. So I had to call in, but Hey, you had a show the other day about things we could do to um, thwart this tyranny. I've handed out, there was a guy called in a couple of years ago that hands out uh, letters. He gets solicitation letters with self-addressed envelopes, and he puts a letter in and sends them back. I put 105 of those back in the mail last year, and I've done some chemtrail picketing over here and um, just telling people about your show. Well, great job, brother. I appreciate your call. Paul in New Jersey. Go ahead, sir. You're on the air. Yes, good morning or good afternoon, whatever it is. Uh, People got to get it and get a film called Freedom to Fascism. And it tells all about the takeover a long time ago. We've been Oh, yeah, my buddy Aaron long. Russo made that. I would have been in that. And for some reason, I just never returned his call, never got it done. I was so busy making one of my own films, Endgame, that I wasn't in that incredibly good film that exposes the private IRS and the private Federal Reserve. And, of course, Homeland Security put out a report under Obama saying that film is terrorism. Did you know that? Well, everything's terrorism when you start to complain or protest against the government. I, I found that out a long time ago on the income tax. But if you the really are, if you really are a terrorist group like the Muslim Brotherhood, then it's okay, though. Oh, all right. But the, the income tax is flawed because we're not under the Constitution anymore. We're under the UCC when it comes to financial or taxing transactions. So you don't have to accept that. Same way with the so-called Obamacare. Well, I hear you. Obamacare is a fraud being unequally administered by a dictator. He's now acting as a dictator, so the whole thing's illegitimate, and it's just time to start stop complying. People need to do that on their own case-by-case -case basis to make your own decision, but uh, I'm having to reassess everything with this lawless government. Good to hear from you, Paul. Catherine.
and Ryan and Peter and Sheepdog and many others. 800-259-9231. Got a short segment coming up. Then former governor of New Mexico is going to be in studio to talk about a bunch of issues. Gary Johnson, straight ahead. Stay with us. All right, coming up at the bottom of the hour, I'll go to Catherine, Sheepdog, Ryan, Romaine, Tom, and many others that are patiently holding. But for the next 30 minutes, we have former New Mexico governor, libertarian, Gary Johnson in here with us to talk about the whole waterfront. We'll get into that pretty much in the next segment. Uh, and then I'm going to continue looking at Nigel Farage becomes popular in Greece after outburst against the prime minister. We're going to play that clip coming up. I'm meaning to do it since last week, but now it's in the Guardian over the weekend that uh, he's like a Ron Paul over there. Anybody that it doesn't matter, left, right, center, who speaks about liberty and not letting these big mega banks run roughshod on us and special interest be above the law is becoming incredibly popular. And that was in the Financial Times of London last Thursday. The tide is rising for American libertarians. The new spirit is rising. Climate of anti-politics has become an attitude rather than a movement. And it shows how people are really starting to wake up. And that's what I want to talk to Gary Johnson about coming up. You know, he's got a national organization that he's got out there educating people. Uh, of course, he ran for president. I guess he's gearing back up to do that as we build these movements. Because even though Ron Paul and people like himself didn't win right away, uh, we're winning the hearts and minds by creating the alternative to the one-party dictatorship that has two heads, the two-headed monster, ouramericainitiative.com. Governor, it's good to have you here with us in the studio. Alex, it's great to be with you here in the studio. We're going to go to break in a minute. This is kind of a short little no man's land segment. But what do you want to cover when we come back? Well, uh, I got a million three hundred thousand votes running for president. Really disappointed uh, that that it wasn't a, a lot more, uh, but uh, nonetheless, a million three hundred thousand votes. But w what I'd like to point out is that these libertarian ideas that we're talking about are really gaining traction in spite of the politicians. The notion of marriage equality, um, of course, I believe that that is a constitutionally guaranteed right, but that's happening. Legalization of marijuana, it's happening in spite of the politicians. Uh, these, these are issues that are moving forward. And then if you look at Syria, look, wasn't, uh, wasn't Congress and the president just geared up to go into Syria? And what? 80% of Americans don't want to do that? I mean, all, every politician in the country had their pants. And down. people are getting more pro-gun, more private property rights. It's, it's happening. Well, it, it's happening. So... In, in spite of not holding political office, and I'm talking about myself uh, as president or other libertarians that have been running or liberty-minded uh, Republicans, uh, you know, n not, a, not, a, not a great big showing, but the reality is, is that in spite of our elected uh, officials, we're moving forward with these ideas nationally in a big way. And that's what you, you know, you let off by talking about that. Well said. Uh, I want to come back then and burrow more into Syria and where that's going and the attempts to start all these wars. I want to talk about the unitary executive. It's gotten bad for a while, but now Obama on just guns, borders, uh, a war, uh, Obamacare saying, I will decide what to implement. And I will decide what not to implement. The NSA, uh, Obama, you know, as you know, the, the Congress said, well, we'll let you decide what to do, President. I mean, what's that sound like to you, Governor? Well, I had the same experience as governor of New Mexico. Don't underestimate how much you can do uh, administratively. I mean, you can do an enormous amount uh, administratively. But the rub is, is that unless it's codified in legislation, unless you get legislation and you sign whatever it is you're doing administratively into law, it lasts as long as you're in office. So I did all these, uh, I, I'm, I, I've, i in my heart of hearts, believe I, I, I did many, many significant things without the legislation, without legislation involved because I did it administratively. But guess what? I leave office and it gets turned around completely. So with Obama, same phenomenon. You'd like to see the legislation uh, that goes along with uh, w with the words. So Obama the other day, I mean, he, he talked he talked pretty uh, Pretty gloriously about cutting back on the NSA, but my response is, is... Governor, stay there. I want to hear that when we come back. we got to go to hard right. Former New Mexico Governor Gary Johnson, who also ran for president in the last election cycle as a libertarian, is uh, here with us in studio. And it's a perfect time to have him in studio with us. He's been traveling around the country with Ben Swan. 
on their libertarian uh, independent media tour. The tide is rising for American libertarians. That's the Financial Times of London uh, last week reporting on that and that across the board, people just want more freedom. Whether they identify themselves as Republican or Democrat, more and more they just call themselves libertarian. And the issue is the establishment recognizes that and is making a big move to try to co-opt it, while at the same time going after kind of the Republican Party version of it, the real Tea Party. They tried to take it over. That didn't work. Now, the Republican Party and Democratic Party leadership is pooling resources to go after that. And it's not that any of these groups are perfect. It's just that they're independent opposition uh, that isn't part of the two-party uh, dictatorship that's really a two-headed monster. Now, Governor, I want to get into some of the victories of awakening we're seeing uh, but in that short little segment for folks that just joined us, we were starting to talk about Obama last week, the president and his speech about the NSA saying Paul Revere would have liked this. Uh, <laughs> this is our next door neighbor. Uh, uh, what is your take on, I mean, the patently illegal NSA takeover? Well, st stop spying on us. I mean, stop with the stop with the NSA intelligence gathering all together. I mean, the whole the whole no notion of due process is just laughable when you have a FISA court that grants uh, 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 authority for NSA to tap 110 million Verizon users. So Obama says now there's going to be oversight. We're going to stop this. Well, you know, th th that's laughable, too, because this is the guy that said when it came to health care that we we're going to be able to keep our policies, uh, uh, that things would cost less, that we'd be able to keep our uh, our our. Our, our, our existing policies. Well, my health insurance tripled, Alex. Uh, it, it's not working out that way. And so when it came to words in the NSA, not bad. Not, you know, no, no surprise. Didn't go far enough. But it's yet. meant to make everybody go back to sleep. It's and, uh, meant to make everybody go back to sleep and everybody's going back to sleep. Incredible. You think they're going back to sleep? Uh. There's no smoking gun out there when it comes to the NSA. There really isn't a smoking gun. In other words, uh, uh, most people look. If you want to, you want to, you want to spy on me. You want to read my emails. You want to listen to my phone conversations. Well, have at it, because you know. Yeah, they don't know that it's economically being used to control, to have algorithms, to have databases on people. They think, oh, I'm not a terrorist. Spy on me, but they don't know that's not what it's about. Actually, for me, the smoking gun is using the NSA on the press. Fox News, Associated Press, and others. I mean, I think that's impeachment right there. Well, and, uh, you know, uh, Hayek spoke about the fact that uh, it, 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 we're, we're, we're socialists. I mean, we've been socialists for a long time, but it's, it's, getting, it's getting heightened, if you will. And the, rear, the real fear is, is where we're headed is uh, fascism. And we're not talking about, I'm not talking about Nazism, not talking about uh, white supremacy here at all. I'm just talking about the notion of, of, of big brother government gaining more and more and more control in our lives. And that's that's the real threat. And that's where all this is headed. Uh, and and you, you, you can use Germany as, as a template for what happened. But when you talk about fascism, I'm not talking about Nazi Germany. I'm not talking about white supremacy. I'm just We're talking about a corporate rule through government. Corporate corporate in in conjunction with uh, the state with government. And that's uh, that's a direct quote from uh, Mussolini that uh, that that that's the, that that was the case that uh, g government uh, should be a, a cooperative effort with uh, with corporate. Absolutely. That is the definition of it. And so we're hurtling into it, and the big corporations are getting access to uh, a lot of this data. And it's really creating a two-class system uh, where... Those that can get money, those that, those that can't get money. I mean, now you're back to the Federal Reserve and the banking system and uh, uh, corporatization of America. Well, that's what I was about to get into. It's almost like rollerball with James Kahn, where the corporate <laughs> class is above the law. What do you make of the big banks trying to get diplomatic immunity, the U.N.? Uh, the uh, Muslim Brotherhood being able to bypass the TSA. Uh, I mean, this is this really shows how if you're part of the system, you're above the law. Well, it, it's it's the what what we need to understand is this this is ga this is gaining traction. This isn't losing traction. So the liberty movement, libertarianism is about is about actually trying to roll this back in, in a big way and. Of course, Obama had that opportunity, and no surprise, he he didn't take advantage of that opportunity. And the, the only way it's going to stick is if you get legislation. I mean, whatever he does, whatever he does administratively, cutting back or or, or heightening what.
whatever it is he does, uh, the next president can change unless this gets codified. In but Congress is supposed to have the laws. So for Congress to say, Obama, you scale them back, that's a cop out. And then he's been caught saying, oh, I'm against the NDAA. Turns out he helped write it. Don't worry, I won't sign it. He does sign it. I mean, you know, this is serious. Well, it is. You could use you could use coal right now as an example. I mean, there there is uh, the EPA writes rules uh, against uh, carbon emission, declaring carbon as a pollutant, and because of that, uh, they're putting the coal business out of business, uh, and they're doing that administratively. Uh, this is this is not laws that have been passed. And he said that he said you can have a coal plant, but we're going to bankrupt you. Well, that's. Uh, I'm not familiar with that quote. Guys, pull up the quote. Exactly. Obama says he'll bankrupt coal. It's 20 seconds. Go ahead. Oh, you know, if, if you're going back a long ways, but in effect. Yeah, seven years ago. Yeah. yeah, in effect, that's exactly what they're doing. Well, look at how he gives General Electric waivers, but then not the other companies. They can go dirty. The others don't have to. I mean, that's the essence of discrimination. Well, that's new royalty, where the king says you can do business, but the other person can't. And as you're well aware, that's what's ha happened with uh, the health care rollout. Uh, you know, uh, now, what do you make of that where he will selectively decide what's implemented now? Well, uh, uh, being done it administratively and... Uh, Look, look, the he whole health care debacle is, is just that, a debacle. And Where do you think it's going? Where do I think it's going? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's moving further and further to socialism, but now, now I'm back to quoting uh, Hayek. You know, the, the goal is socialism, but the reality is, is that it ends up being very, it ends up being fascist. Look at the Soviet Union. Yep. Can't the left just get it? Communism and socialism doesn't work. Well, uh, no, uh, th th that's no, they, they, they can't. And uh, socialism in and, in and of itself as a goal, um, you, you know, that's those well-meaning people. I don't, I don't want to say that these people aren't well-meaning, but what they're missing is where it actually ends up. And it doesn't end up as socialism, it ends up as fascism. That's right. But, uh, you know, as you've seen around the country uh, with ourAmericanInitiative.com, uh, there is a huge rising tide, and, and the establishment admits that, but as the Financial Times says, they're just getting out of politics. People say, I don't agree with this, I'm a libertarian, but they leave the process. The answer is, get involved in the process, but also start setting up alternative media, alternative currencies, alternative cultures, so you build a new system while we try to go in and self-defense and take over the old. And the and that's the reality. That is that is happening in conjunction, and and that's the heartening part about all this. Is that uh, okay? Libertarians haven't won office, but look at the issues. Colorado legalizes marijuana. Washington State. I mean, we're we're just on the cusp of this, but you know what? Uh, it's the tipping point. Uh, the world, the United States, is going to legalize marijuana here. It's it's at a tipping point, and it'll legalize marijuana. When, they, when everybody recognizes that Colorado is a better place to live because police will go out and enforce real crime as opposed to nonviolent uh, victimless crime. And let's not forget either that uh, citizens, uh, Colorado is really advanced on this. Uh, citizens of Denver many years ago voted to decriminalize marijuana on a campaign based on marijuana being safer than alcohol. Sure, and sure. I always maintain that. Sure, well, yeah, I mean, I agree that, you know, Obama said that it's the same as alcohol. No, it's not. Marijuana is a lot less destructive in all the studies than alcohol. Alcohol is very destructive. Uh, even though I don't like marijuana, I like alcohol. But the whole point is, is that that does show a sea change. My only problem is George Soros and people are, are for decriminalizing it because, because they see the business opportunities in it. And plus, they want everybody stoned out of their mind. I think marijuana is massively abused. So just because I'm for decriminalization, legalization, doesn't mean I endorse oh, the extreme sure. culture of dopeheadness. Well, and you know what, Alex? I don't drink. I don't drink because I think it's a lot worse. Uh, having drank and smoked, I don't begrudge the fact that you're going to have a few cocktails at all. As long as w whatever your consumption does to you doesn't affect me well i don't even really have i kind of go off and on i'll go years without a cocktail and then do some cocktails but i mean undoubtedly i've looked at the studies alcohol in the aggregate kills hundreds of thousands of people a year well and I'm marijuana nobody yeah and i've always maintained that uh that uh, legalizing marijuana would actually less lead to overall less substance abuse well yeah because it'll get rid of the gateway
Well, and and Gateway has been refuted, I think, completely. But some people. But I mean, look, you about. you make marijuana illegal, you then you get it from the drug culture, and at least in my experience growing up, I didn't do hard well, drugs, but exactly I saw it. Right. No, see, you're 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 right on. You you go to you go to get your marijuana today in a, in a black market. Well, gee, we're out of marijuana today, but we, we got some methamphetamine. We, we, yeah, in my experience in high school, that's exactly how mm -hmm. it worked. Well, right. Because I had friends that would start smoking pot, and they go, "Oh, well, now we're doing this." In that respect, it is it remains a gateway in that respect. Yeah, only in the black market. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Only in the black market, exactly. So get rid of the black market and then it gentrifies. Well, and in this case, uh, like I say, uh, I think uh, in a legalized environment, people will find marijuana as a uh, uh, a less, uh, a more viable alternative to uh, to alcohol. Here's my issue. I see it as a bellwether, but, but quite frankly, I'd like to legalize the Second Amendment. I'd like to legalize freedom. I'd like to legalize Legal families. The Constitution. And, and Le course, where, Le where in the Constitution does it uh, does it say that, uh, at least when it came to the prohibition of alcohol, they, they made it a constitutional amendment? Well, I mean, my issue is we know more guns, less crime. The places that took the guns have higher crime. I want to ask you about the second moment when we come back. Syria, about your national campaign, where you're going, your website, and more. Final segment with Gary Johnson. Uh, that was the first time I was ever... You know, able to actually sit down and watch raw footage of him talk about things. And I agree with a lot of what he has to say. My bottom line is this. I agree the libertarian movement's exploding. Uh, just the awakening's exploding. Uh, elaborate on Syria and what happened there. Well, just that we should we should not be involved in Syria. Uh, in Syria, we should stop our military interventions. I, I think we have tens of millions of enemies to this country that uh, would not exist but for our military interventions. And this was going to be an extension of that. This was going to be a worse situation. We we oust the dictator, we replace him with the good guy, and the good guy becomes worse than the guy we replaced before. And I'm pointing out the obvious, things that you talk about every single day. But it's good news because, as you said, upwards of 82%, depending on the poll, some were... 77, some 80, some 82. You said Recognize it. that. But, yeah. I'm, but, but I'm impressed that you average the two together. That's what I do. Eight, no, I mean, I really, because I know the numbers. It's funny to hear you say the exact number. Of all the polls, it was about 80% of you average them together. Said no way, including conservatives that are usually big warmongers under their conditioning, you know, mainline Republicans and Democrats coming together. That's what the establishment fears was saying. We're not going to be Al-Qaeda's Air Force. No, it, it, it was terrific. I mean, uh, Congress, uh, all of Congress got caught with their pants down, and so did the president when they came up against uh, Americans' ac actual uh, attitude toward doing this again. And we had to have that war carry set in days or everybody's dead. And notice months later, four months later, we're all fine. Gee, gee. You know, I was in Austin yesterday for the gun rights rally. I got to uh, be the opening speaker at that gun rights rally. We got rally. some video of that. It's going to be on the news tonight. Good well, job. It's, it's terrific. I mean, I appreciate everybody that was out there that was openly caring. Uh, freedoms that um, don't get exercised get lost. And uh, you know what, Alex? When I was governor of New Mexico, I got to sign the concealed carry legislation in New Mexico. This was 1995. You were a leader in that. Well, when I signed it, though, the legislature came to me and they said, um, hey, um, uh, um, the only way we're going to pass this is if we have uh, if we have this educational program that's going to go along with it. We pay for the permits. And then and then I had the, the really gun rights people say, you know, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't, don't you know, just allow us to do it, period. Well, my my final take on it was if if that's the route that we go, it'll never pass. So I did sign it. But after Aurora, Colorado, lengthening my story here, after Aurora, Colorado, I make a pledge to myself that I'm going to get my concealed carry permit. All right. Because I want if I'm ever found in a situation, if I find myself in a situation like that, I want to be a good guys have a responsibility. Good guys have a responsibility. Exercise your freedoms. Well, now I go to now I go looking into the concealed carry permit in New Mexico, which I signed the legislation, and I haven't been able to carve out the amount of time that I have to go and attend these classes to do this. And and it's a fair amount of money. It's not cheap to do all this to take this class and to then get the permit, and then it has to be renewed. So we need open carry. Well, there is open carry that exists in New Mexico, and of course that's we what need we open need. concealed carry. <laughs> we need a right to carry. We need open concealed carry. But but back to back to the whole gun rights issue too. 
back to the Second Amendment, is these are freedoms that we now have to exercise. I need to take the time and go and get this permit because if I don't go and get it, this will be a freedom that will get taken away. I exercise it, it will be harder to take that away. Exercise your muscles or lose them. Exercise your muscles or lose them. And that's what you're doing. People can join you at ouramericainitiative.com. And we got about a minute and a half left. What do you want to close with, Governor? Well, uh, just the notion that, um, you know, you know keep, keep up the vigilance. Uh, I, I appreciate what you do out there. I appreciate the things that you say, the awareness. I was at an event last night, uh, Alex, where uh, a woman was a Democrat and now she's a libertarian because of Alex Jones, <laughs> which I thought was terrific. And, and so uh, even though we're not in elected office, he, and, and, I, and don't get me wrong, I realize there are those that are leaning that, uh, that attain office. I mean, there are gains being made in that direction. The point is we are the future. The issues are being addressed. The issues are happening. The issues that concern us are advancing. Well, look at how many Ron Paul libertarian type Republicans are getting elected in the Tea Party movement. The real Tea Party, not the, you know, the Republican one. Well, not, not the, you know, I was asked that question the other night about, uh, about Tea Party. What do you think about the Tea Party? My response was, which Tea Party? The original Tea Party that talked about dollars and cents and the part that the Tea Party that I identified with or the Tea Party today that has two signs in their hand? One balanced the federal budget and the other one uh, don't touch my Medicare. Which, which Tea Party? Absolutely. Mean? Governor, former We're governor, thank march. you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a powerful piece that uh, our great editor, Darren McBreen, put together. For the radio show, any slash TV show if you're a TV viewer on PrisonPlanet.tv. And Darren's working on some amazing intros for the new uh, TV uh, nightly news when we launched in the new studio. Could have done it weeks ago, but we're just busy tweaking a lot of other things around the office and working on some big guests and reporters and things like that. But you just saw that piece dealing with false flags and how government staged things. It must have been four or five years ago. Well, you guys put it on screen so I can give folks the name. Four or five years ago, uh, that a video was produced, I guess back in 2009, January 13th, 2009, by Thought Crime 7, 9 11 Lessons from Star Trek. And I think it's important to re air this like I did five years ago again today because it's back in the news. DHS gave Muslim Brotherhood VIP treatment, no TSA pat-downs at airports all over the United States. It's the same thing for globalists, the same thing with diplomatic immunity. Obama is becoming a dictator, and he clearly is supercharging. There's always been a secret relationship and a dirty relationship and a public relationship as well with radical Islam, especially Wahhabist uh, Sunni extremists out of Saudi Arabia, that the globalists use as a secret army. That's even on PBS. But now they're really turning them loose everywhere. And uh, I've been in London before, back in 2005, on the street filming a building. And had folks in the Muslim full gear come over and scream at me and say, how dare you film? Are you filming me when I wasn't even filming them? And as soon as I bowed up, they backed off. The average Brit would literally just bow down. And so the fact that the West has been culturally neutered, the establishment is radicalizing Islam, bringing it in, protecting it, and then using it for political correctness clashes to then restrict free speech across the board while they put extremist Muslims on British television calling for the murder of Christians. That is allowed in England, on record. But if you're Michael Savage and you want to come to town uh, and uh, speak, uh, you're banned. I, I am not an, what you call an Islamophobe that blames everything on Muslims. A lot of great Muslims out there. I've defended Muslims being blamed completely for 9-11 and the pretext to invade Iraq uh, on the back of what Al-Qaeda was involved with, with shadowy elements of the CIA. And the media knew that was a sophisticated statement, so they just spun it that I was saying that, you know, the government did all of 9-11. No criminal elements working with radical Islam did to kick off this clash of civilizations that gives radical Islam power to be facing off against the American superpower. That has tripled the size of al-Qaeda forces and other uh, Islamicist many think tanks have said. It's energized them the last 12 years. They understand psychology. That's why these globalists are in control. So I'll describe this for radio listeners. Uh, they wonder why everybody's fighting on board the ship, the Klingons and the Earthlings. 
something is turning them against him and there's this little energy field creature that feeds off conflict that feeds off divide and conquer so it's a good allegory since you can't see the video if you're not watching on prisonplanet.tv you can hear it so uh captain kirk's talking to the little energy ball that's floating around it's usually invisible manipulating people's emotions to feed off of it well the globalists don't really feed off the emotions even though psychopaths and others do actually at a subconscious level a psychological level it actually feeds off the energy in this allegory the globalists just feed off the energy by directing it into getting us to do what they want to control and run society we're going to play this piece and then go to Catherine in canada who wants to talk about saudi investments in u.s terror sheepdog uh ryan romaine and kyle we're going to get to everybody here today and i've opened phones in the third hour as well uh, but here is this piece and again if you're a radio listener we'll put it back on screen for folks so i can tell uh radio listeners uh, out there you can just go to youtube uh if you want to uh see this piece uh and type in 9 -11 lessons from star trek and i'm going to ask kurt nemo our one of the great writer crew posters in there to repost this uh right now uh you know tying it into how false flags are used so let's go ahead and go to 9-11 lessons from Star Trek, how balkanization, divide and conquer, race pimping, you name it, works. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. It's very powerful when you actually see the video and the images. And we're going to have that again reposted at Infowars.com right now. When you ask him to send it out on my Twitter, thank you. Bill Alex Jones, thank you very much. It's very, very frustrating to see the globalists use human psychology against us and the public's been taught there's no psychology there's no social engineering no one's trying to manipulate you uh there's nothing happening the government loves you the media loves you when we all know it's the opposite of that and our acquiescence to this has really gotten the system out of control and it's rebelling against every form of goodness this is a jezebel type rebellion against the family, rebellion against men, rebellion against women, rebellion against God, rebellion against common sense, rebellion against con convention, rebellion against uh, reality, where babies are strip searched by the TSA in front of people. You can pull up the photos of like one-year-olds having their diapers taken off in public. Little boys have their pants pulled off, three-year-olds in front of people, and men patting on them, pedophile training while the Muslim Brotherhood just marches through at airports all over the country. I mean, it's just a complete fraud. It's obviously a power grab. We send our reporters out to California. They go to a water treatment plant to check for radiation levels because that's where they precipitate out. And they're across the street wearing, you know, nice clothes with flagged microphones, even if it's just regular folks with cameras. Nothing wrong with that, First Amendment. And the security guard comes over and says, you're not allowed to do that. Calls the cops. The cops come over and say, you know, why are you causing a problem? Get out of here. There's no law, but I'm not going to let you film. Think about that statement. There's no law, but I'm not going to let you film because that cop got a call and it's the wastewater plant. It's the city. And well, he better do what they say. They say, run these guys off. Well, you know what? The big foreign bankers are going to call cop and take your pension fund. Watch. They're going to call and take your bank account. And they're going to make your kid eat GMO and they're going to kill all of us. Basically, that's the game. We just, if we don't stand up, we lose everything. And I go back to the police all day because they're where the rubber meets the road. And you look at China threatening to attack the Philippines now and to attack Japanese islands. I mean, that's up on Infowars.com. You look at the, what's happening in the world economy. You look at what's going on. The globalists think they're going to get away with all this. They're going whole hog here. We're going to go to break, come back with Catherine and others, I promise. And Go through your calls quickly and then continue with your calls after we've exhausted these. I'll give the number out again. But um, briefly, please remember this broadcast is listener supported. You can support the nightly news and the tip of the spear in the First Amendment by becoming an InfoWarsNews.com or PrisonPlanet.tv. Same site, different names. Uh, you can see all the films, nightly news, special reports, all of it, five ninety five dollars a month. 11 people can use the membership simultaneously with the same membership code. And so it's a great way to spread the word to friends and family. If you have a membership and haven't done it, now is the time. We need to promote independent platforms, you know, outside of YouTube and Google and the other big systems that can censor us. We still put the stuff up there as well a day later, but get it first and support the First Amendment with your dollars and 
at prisonplanet.tv. And we've got a special running till the end of the month to get five plus months free when you sign up for a year. So you pay for like six months and some change, you get five months free. Prisonplanet.tv. And we have more of the incredible nascent iodine you hear folks raving about. Available, ready to ship out right now at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Stay with us. Your phone calls, tons of news straight ahead. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is literal declared Al-Qaeda-connected groups. Uh, Catherine, go ahead. Hi, Alex. Hi. I honestly believe it's all about money and foreign investment. Like the Saudis back in 2000, Muslim Brotherhood, these groups all have big, big dollars invested in the U.S. And it's almost like they don't want to insult these groups with our procedures, but they just let them get almost like a free pass. Well, yeah, because it's all about breaking the American people's will and giving us prisoner training. You wouldn't go through TSA stuff unless you'd been in uh, prison in, in your life. This is prisoner training. We're being turned into an institutionalized, giant prison country. Well, exactly. And they're just letting these groups come in and out as they want so they can create more fear in the American people. So they can pretty much say, oh, look, we just let them in. These people come in somehow. we got to strengthen uh, more. Abs no, no, exactly. They pray for a terrorist attack. They open all the doors. There's three or four different types. There's, sometimes there's real terrorist attacks. They're very rare. They're usually badly coordinated and low level. Then you've got where they open the door, protect people, and block investigations, and they let them attack. Those are still rare but happen more often. Then you've got somewhat stage where you have patsies, and you set them up, and you really carry out the attack. Then you've got purely staged terror attacks, and the last two are most of them. Well, exactly, and they, if they, they, they have so much, these Saudi groups and different Muslim Brotherhood, they're all connected. They have huge investments in the economy that you just never hear about. Oh, yeah, no, no, America's open to be bought and sold, and the Saudis have pumped trillions, not billions, in. And, I mean, Saudi Arabia has bought up a lot of Hollywood. Saudi Arabia has bought up uh, a lot. I mean, you see it all the time where you can't get a movie out, or they arrest people that make uh, you know, a, a film making fun of Muhammad. In America, no First Amendment, if, but only for the Muslims. Again, it's a very dangerous trend. Yeah, that's it's pretty much all I want to say. I truly, truly believe it's, it's, it's all about the money and about investments, and they don't want to insult certain groups. No, right? no, I totally, I totally, totally agree with you. Uh, I mean, you know, I, they've done documentaries on it. You pull up in a brand new Lamborghini or a Ferrari, People let you do whatever you want. Well, imagine when you have trillions of dollars. They just do whatever they want. And then meanwhile, we're just absolutely wide open to the wolves of government and corporations. We have no special interest. We have nobody lobbying for us. We're just dead meat, basically, until we grow our liberty teeth again. Let's go ahead and talk to Ryan in Delaware. Go ahead. Welcome. Hey, Alex. How's it going? Uh, it's going all right. I'm pretty freaked out about the world, quite frankly. I'm not the truth. Well, you know, it's funny. Like, four years ago, I... I would have made fun of Ron Paul if I had known of you. I would have made fun of you. And then I did a dangerous thing. I, I heard some of the information, and I thought, well, let me look into that. He can't be completely uh, out of left field. And lo and behold, uh, you're right. And I wanted to just say to the, the new listeners that, you know, if you're thinking this is crazy, just uh, just do your homework. Don't just dismiss it, because what Alex is saying has got, uh, got a lot of merit. Well, I wish it didn't have merit. I mean, that's the thing, is that this stuff, most of it's hiding in plain view. What did you begin to discover when you began to look into things? Uh, I was actually a second-year economics major in school, and uh, I started to ask quite a few uh, annoying questions about the Federal Reserve. <laughs> and uh, stumbled on that, and then I remember finding you, and I told, uh, I told a buddy of mine when I was trying to convince him about the private run for profit Fed, and he said, oh, then you believe 9-11 was an inside job. And I said, no, no, he gets kind of crazy about that. And then uh, <laughs> I went ahead and thought, well, let me just hear what he has to say. And I heard Building 7, and it just unraveled. And, it's, you know, there are crazies out there, absolutely. But this stuff is, is legitimate. It's not, you know. Well, sure, up. sure. I mean, the controlled dinosaur media gives kooky examples. Or they take stuff out of context, I do, to try to discredit the movement. And none of us are perfect. But the point is, we don't want the New World Order to come in. Its fruits are bad. This isn't good for almost anybody but 85 top globalists. We're taking your phone calls. And then we've got the report I never aired because he was in town for several days. And David Knight went back out to confront him. So he's got two different confrontations we're going to premiere coming up at the start of the next uh, segment after we finish with some calls.
David Knight special report uh, confronting and speaking with Bill Ayers. So that is coming up. I mean, Bill Ayers is such a monstrous person. And I'm going to explain why coming up. But right now, let's go to your phone calls. Let's talk to Sheepdog in Iowa. Thanks for holding her on the air. Yes, Alex. Thank you. Say, I have a lot of experience with Middle East hierarchy during the first Gulf War. Right now, I believe, purely my opinion, there's a thorn in the side of Western Christianity and all of Islam equally. And it's a phony prince named Prince Bandar. Maybe you've read the book. He's a playboy friend of George Bush Jr. And I think he's at the heart of a lot of problems for the world right now. Well, that's right, Have sir. Go ahead. Have you read the book? Uh, no, but I'm familiar with uh, Prince Bandar, the head of Saudi intelligence, who brags he's running al-Qaeda in Russia and staging terror attacks and brags he's running the al-Qaeda forces attacking Syria. And so I am aware of that. But, I mean, tell us what you learned when you were in the Middle East in 1990. I never had to go there. I was a retainer in the United States for all our Middle East allies, hierarchy and high-ranking military. And I know they are some fine, fine people. And I appreciate Islam almost as much as my Catholic uh, dogma. Well, I mean, I want to be clear. Well, exactly. The whole demonization of all Muslims is definitely uh, a, a, a diversion. But, I mean, what do you make of how uh, al-Qaeda is being turned loose around the world? Well, yeah, it's pretty obvious. The other night I was watching some news clip with the black mass boys and their masks fell off and it was clearly a Anglo individual behind it who's no more an Arab than you're a Pomeranian. <laughs> yeah. But I wanted to make that stress that point. Uh, there's not near as much stress between the factions of Islam as people would be led to believe. It's all a political ruse. And it's very dangerous. Tell and us, tell us why it's dangerous. Tell us why it's dangerous. And talk about Bandar. Because, well, let's go back to 9-11. First of all, I believe those were RC tanker jets that hit the towers. But afterwards, Bandar and Bush got together and discussed it. And it's in the book. And the author doesn't even cover his tracks. No, no. They were meeting on the morning of 9-11, George Bush Sr., at the, in the Carlisle Group, uh, and he was at the Bin Laden table, London Guardian Associated Press. Yes. Yes, sir, Alex Jones. But that's all. I could go on for hours, but uh, I'd want to prep my comments because I have worked shoulder to shoulder above the Secret Service with all our Gulf War I Middle East allies hierarchy in the United States for certain specific reasons, admirable reasons, benevolent reasons, medical reasons. And there's a lot of good people leading in the, the UAE. The Sheikh Zayed family is what holds that whole, holds the world together, actually. Uh, but he died, Sheikh Zayed, and his wife, Queen Fatna. But you know what happened. You know what uh, Albert Sphere said about Hitler. He said, you don't know it's the devil when he's got his arm around you. But I understand it's a diverse group over there. But, but, but Prince Bandar is bad, bad news. We all agree on that. Thank you so much. Sebelius uses MLK Day to plug Obamacare. That's up on Infowars.com. Video, 9-11 Lessons from Star Trek. That's now posted. Very interesting video. Suspension lifted for imaginary bow and arrow child. Now playing like you have a bow and arrow uh, gets you kicked out of school as part of the thought crime. You think we're going to have guns legal and stuff if they can ban the image of them? Soros supporters uh, protest turns violent in Ukraine. Yeah, that's CIA trying to overthrow the country because they didn't go with the euro to be destroyed by the euro. I think U Ukraine should be neutral, not part of Russia, not part of the euro. Video, the gadgets that snoop on you every day. Very powerful. New video getting into how gadgets tie into the NSA. CIA-connected terror group issues threat 
ahead of Russian Olympics. Expert China preparing to target U.S. aircraft carriers. Warfare, welfare, and Wonder Woman, how Congress spends your money by Ron Paul. That's some of the news up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. We should probably have Paul Watson's article move back into features at the top. I mean, if you want, we can remove uh, or Ron Paul's and put it in a subcategory because that's important, but not as important as Paul Watson's article that we're here uh, talking about is the main uh, story. You can find it at DrudgeReport.com, though. He's still got it up at the top on the left-hand side, third story down. Uh, so I guess that's where you'll find that. DHS gave Muslim Brotherhood VIP treatment, no TSA pat-downs. Well, yeah, and the Saudi Arabian royalty doesn't, or, or even the, the Bin Laden family that's not royal, by the hundreds, they can go as they please. And uh, they can fly back and forth even when all U.S. airspace is shut down. So that's now out that uh, last year... Uh, the uh, Muslim Muslim Brotherhood leaders listed as an Al-Qaeda-affiliated terror group. Uh, we're allowed to fly in and out of the U.S. over and over again anywhere they wanted, uh, skipping the security, the secondary security that other Americans are put through. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And, and now you notice they're saying in the news, oh, no, no, no. Homeland Security is not for Al-Qaeda. It's for the Tea Party, returning veterans, gun owners, Christians, libertarians. And think about how now that's just passe. Everybody's like, everybody knows that. Well, when I got those documents five years ago, I guess it was six years ago now, Obama had been in office. It was 2010. Or was it late 2009? Type in Ron Paul Tea Party listed as terrorist in MIAC report, guys, and pull up the original InfoWars. It took Ron Paul. Ron Paul's office called me about three days in, and they said, is this really real? And I said, I told you I called the phone number on it to the FBI, and they said we weren't supposed to have it. And we called the state police in Missouri, but it has an FBI number on I said, of course it's real. And then a state rep came out and defended it as good, and then everyone admitted it was real. That was Thursday, August 18, 2011. Yeah, no, that's a new article. War on terror targets new targets. Veterans, Tea Partiers, anti-Fed activists. That's when they went public with that. Now, it was like 2009 or 2010, and the exact headline, let me try to bring up the exact headline here. Exact headline was Mayak Report. I think Watson or Nemo wrote the article. Uh, Ron Paul and others listed as extremist, Infowars.com. I love this, this search engine game. Let me see if I can do it, and then we'll go to your calls. The point is, everybody knows we broke that. Of course, when it finally broke and was confirmed, you know, Fox News, CNN didn't give us any credit because they don't want people knowing that there's real media uh, out there. Let me see. Ron, uh, just say Tea Party. Party listed as extremist. Infowars.com. The problem is there's so many of these now. You know, thousands and thousands of articles. Here's one. Prison Planet Obamacare. There it is, secret state police report. That's it, Kurt Nemo. 2009, March 11th. Good job, guys. Secret state police report. Ron Paul, Bob Barr, Chuck Baldwin, libertarians are terrorists. And uh, then we got a bunch of more documents after that came out from the feds and others saying the same thing, basically written by the Southern Poverty Law Center slash ADL. But again, the reason I raised that story is people didn't believe it. Ron Paul was in Congress then. I got a call from Ron Paul. Uh, his people, and they said, Alex, uh, you know, we believe your reports, but so you, you know, how do you know that's real? And I said, well, I called the state police, and they got upset and said it's real. I'm not supposed to have it. It's restricted. You're not supposed to be secret police, state police. And then I called the, the feds, as I've done on air before, and people can't believe it's real. I can't believe he has the nerve to do that. Like I have courage or something. I'd have to have blind courage not to fight these people. I'm worried about them taking over and winning. That's the issue. And this is a serious situation, ladies and gentlemen, very serious situation that now is just mainline because about a month after that report, DHS stands by controversial report listing Tea Party extremist. And Big Sissy, very handsome person, came out and defended it and said, yes, the number one terror threat is now gun owners, Tea Party, returning veterans. 
they defend that. I mean, it's just it's so otherworldly. The Taliban can come in, Al Qaeda can come in and go. In every case, they're protecting them. Of course, they're protecting them. They're criminals that are working with other criminals in an intelligence deal to stage this stuff to take over, like the Gulf of Tonkin writ large. I mean, this is not rocket science, and I'm tired of it. I'm sick of it. You know, Governor Gary Johnson, former governor, came in and he said, how are you doing? Your head's not getting too big, is it? Uh, and I've met him a lot in person. He's a nice guy. And I went, what do you mean? He goes, well, you're just getting so big. I hear people talk about you everywhere. I went, man, I'm not. No, no. I said, I'm not feeling real good getting a big head. In fact, I, I got the opposite. I got the opposite going on. I'm on a mission here. And, and, I, and I like Gary. It's just that even people in the establishment that are more libertarian... To them, they think it's a process, you know, it's history unfolding and we're going to... No, no, no. They've got a hardcore authoritarian takeover grid going into place. And they've got an official army manual so that they're going to re-educate libertarians and conservatives and gun owners. They're going to stage stuff and come try to arrest us. And when we fight back, they're going to call us terrorists and kick off World War III domestically. And they don't care if a million cops die and a million soldiers. They love that. So just remember, when it all comes down... Just remember, when it all comes down, there's 85 globalists, the Economic Times reports, the richest people in the world, and almost all of them got it through bid rigging and, and, and scams and insider trading and uh, fraudulent securities like derivatives. I mean, you read these 85 people that have half the world's wealth. By the way, it's a lot more than that. And then you find out they're all, almost all of them are supporting Ending the family, taking our guns, raising our taxes, because they're offshore and exempt. <clears throat> this is a wonderland with high-tech criminals, with armies and, and disinfo and, and, and all the Hollywood psych warfare. And it, and it makes me absolutely, as we come up to the edge of this, I'm not trying to be negative here. We have to admit this is going on. That's the hope. That's what's positive. But this isn't about... Alex Jones being a bigwig. This isn't about, oh, I'm this glitter bug, uh, you know, like one of these TV preachers up here, and I'm really, my ego is really enjoying all this. But frankly, I, I've gotten so much more spiritual and so much more centered that the flesh is easier to ignore now. But it's painful because... It's not that I even have to avoid fleshly stuff now. Compared to most people, I'm, you know, like a goody two-shoes, but still, even thoughts. It's that now I remember the comfort of the flesh and, and ego and, and things. And, and it's like a life raft in this, you know, I, 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 I kind of need those things. It's fun to hate your enemies and use it as a defense. It's very warm. It's, it's fun to be able to harden your heart. It, it, it's, it's easier to be able to hate people that lie about you and do you wrong instead of feeling sorry for them and really realizing how fallen we all are. I mean, it would be so easy for me to get into power and everything, and instead it's the opposite. And I just see the folly of what all these people are doing, and they have no idea what they're part of. People have no idea how hard it's going to get, how bad it's going to be. Look, this is all real. They really do put poison in your water and poison in your food, and it's all on record, and they really are trying to hurt the children and dumb them down with two plus two equals five. And they really are building re-education camps, official army manuals. Type in re-education camp army manual. You'll be at the army's website. How they're going to process you and your social security. How they're going to re-educate you in the camps. How they're going to take your children from you and break up you and your family. And, then, and of course, they're going to roll this out in increments. Just like Obamacare doubles and triples your prices. No one's stopping it. No one's coming to the aid. The Republican leadership's going along with it. They're all bought and paid for. They're giving Obama dictatorial power. And Gary Johnson's in here, and I'm talking to him and going, he's like, well, yes, he's using administrative, and it's not really good. You know, wanting to sound reasonable. No, no, no it's not really good. I mean, this, is, this, is, this is how we got Lenin and Stalin and Hitler and Mao and Fel Castro and all the rest of it. And we're slated for the ash heap of history. And we're going downhill like a snowball headed for hell. To quote uh, the hag. Stop rolling downhill like a snowball headed for hell.
And I just, uh, I feel everything. I see it all. And now my whole world's been taken over by understanding we're sitting right next to pure evil. The ship of state is run by Satan. And we're going in through and beyond. The average person has no idea what's happening. Your call's coming up. And we are a more and more unvirtuous people. And so unvirtuous people will be ruled by wolves, and we are now slaves. Romaine in Florida, thanks for holding. Then we'll go to Kyle and others. Uh, you're on the air. Go ahead. What's going on, my brother? It's actually Ramon. I'm sorry. I can't read right at a distance. Uh, no, no, they spelled it wrong. Okay. Oh, hey, well, Ramon, good to have you on with us. Thanks, brother. I never take it offensively. You know why? Because I know you're a good man. I know you're out here fighting for my children, your children, and the whole, hu the whole humanity. And I respect you and your whole staff for that. And I'm out here fighting with you. But the reason why I called today is because I got a close, you know, I, I call him a friend that's in the military. And he had the nerve to tell me that when, you know, there aren't any terrorist plots being conducted by the so-called real terrorists, they have to do it themselves. And they have to perpetrate this evil because they have to keep the military, the military industrial complex rolling. They've gotten so far down this, this trap and they've gotten so in debt with this mentality that they have to keep this war mind state going, this guerrilla war mind state that there is no going back. Even the military knows now it's on each individual whether they're willing to fight when the time comes against it or they're going to fight for it. Well, that's the thing, Ramon, is that they've gone from saying we don't fund al-Qaeda to, okay, we do, but it's for your own good. To we don't spawn you without warrants. Okay, yes, we do. And then they get caught targeting the press and Tea Party with it and harassing people with the IRS and no one gets in trouble. I mean, they're a bunch of crooks. And there's a lot of people in the system that are going to go, okay, I guess, I guess it's all true. The conspiracy theorists were right, but so what? We're still the good guys because they just don't have the moral honor to say no to all this. And so the next evil is the next benchmark. And then a greater evil is the benchmark. And then soon the bottom falls out. And, and that's the point we're approaching. I absolutely agree, but I'm hoping that everybody's humanity, I'm hoping that everybody's love for their children and one another grows huge to the point that all this darkness, all this darkness they're trying to surround us with, all this hatred and fear for one another, whether you're Muslim, Christian, Jewish, atheist, black, white, it's so much division being perpetrated amongst us. We have to look past that and realize that God created all of us. He wants prosperity for all his children. So we have to fight. Those of us who are good Christians, good Muslims, good atheists, good whatever you call yourself, agnostic, please stand up and fight for one another. If you see one person's liberties and freedoms being perpetrated, then that's everybody's liberty and freedom being perpetrated. Once we start fighting for one another again, we'll start winning these battles. Absolutely. And, you know, I've been one that wasn't for this war on Islam garbage. I knew it was a manipulation, but it is a discrimination against everyone that they let the Muslim Brotherhood uh, not be checked. Everybody else does. That's discrimination. They're all busy trying to get race baiting going on because they know the real discrimination of the UN being exempt, the big bankers being exempt from their own laws, General Electric being exempt from their own laws. That's the real discrimination. That's the big, all of us, the common people are being absolutely screwed over. We've got to come together for common law, common weights and measures, justice. And justice is never perfect, but man, it's really getting screwed up right now. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? Just, um, you've been doing a great job, you and your whole staff, man. You guys should try to take more often some breaks, be with your family. We know you guys are out here on the front line, but you should take time to consider, man. Those kids that you're raising are the most important thing. I know. Believe me, that. believe me. I want to spend more time with my family. Uh, now, now expanding on this, though, so is your friend in the Army? Is he enlisted? Is he an officer? Non-enlisted? I mean, officer? What is he? Uh, Non-commissioned? Without saying too much, we'll just say that uh, he's a high-ranking officer in the Navy. We'll just say that. We'll say because I don't want to get him in any trouble. He's a good person, but I believe the mentality of a soldier for being in the military so long has manipulated his opinion. So wait a minute. He admits they staged terror attacks but says that's good? Absolutely. Absolutely. Says that without that, they wouldn't have the funding or the support to keep up this military industrial complex that they need to, quote-unquote, keep us safe from the real terrorists.
So they say if there's not enough real attacks, you have to keep it going, and that's the way you know you keep us safe. Sure, sure. No, that's what them. false. That's what false flags are. No, that's that's what they're doing. Ed and Michael's calls, and then that's going to be it for calls today because I've got some more news I want to hit. Briefly, this hour, don't forget, was brought to you by the best durable food company out there, bar none, mypatriotsupply.com forward slash Alex. And I'm going with them because they've got certified non-GMO in their entire uh, great uh, line of high-quality, fresh, storable foods. Delicious, easy to prepare, put together with GMO-free cops. Storable for up to 25 years. Infowars.com has links over to them as well if you forget the site. But it's mypatriotsupply.com forward slash Alex. Or give them a call at 866-229-0927. Briefly, I'm not going to belabor this. We have the fluoride shield that's in two-ounce bottles, twice the size of the survival shield, nascent iodine, that has the nascent iodine in it, but also four other, five other shilogy and other key things that are known to take heavy metals, fluorines, fluoride out of your body, and protect your thyroid. We've got fluoride shield available at InfoWarsLife.com along with a survival shield and super male vitality that we're getting rave reviews on for this estrogen-bombed environment. Uh, just try it and tell me what you think. All we've gotten, again, you've heard them on air, the point of having to tell people, please stop, is rave reviews because we're bringing you the highest quality across the board. And with all the toxins in our environment and with the fluoride in the water and with it bioaccumulating in the crops and with the radiation increasing across the country, it is now more important than ever to get these key trace elements and minerals into our bodies and your purchase, regardless, supports the broadcast. So take the super male vitality challenge. Women can take it as well. It does the same thing. Take, in fact, better, they say, actually, with women. Uh, take this survival shield, uh, the super male vitality, the fluoride shield. You can take them all together, but consult a physician if you have any questions or any pre-consisting uh, conditions. Uh, and then give us your reviews, because regardless, you're supporting the broadcast and getting the message of liberty out to everyone. So go to InfoWarsLife.com today. Check out the informational videos. Read the literature. We have the great southern Mexico high mountain Chiapas coffee that's organic and volcanic soil. My favorite coffee took me years to find a source directly to the Chiapas farmers. This is directly to them beyond fair trade. And so you actually help uh, build up a real economy sustainable for those people. Uh, people love the coffee. I love it. It's my favorite. People either say it's their favorite or they love it. And you're supporting the broadcast, Wake Up America, with immune support blend and regular blend at InfoWarsLife.com or InfoWarsStore.com. Okay, let's now get to this story, and then I'm going to go back to your calls. Secret Minority Report tech in all post-2010 iPhones. Now, they already have it built in with GPS triangulation by the feds and a chip in there where they can dial in with a capacitor, even when it's turned off since 1996, all cell phones, including smartphones, and turn it on and listen to you. And I told you that many years ago. That's now public. Told you that in 1997. Now, this goes in because the local media is now reporting on it. And, and, and oh, my gosh, it's breaking. Maybe they'll get a Pulitzer Prize. Uh, Apple recently announced that they uh, had secretly installing Minority Report-style tracking technology in all iPhones, since the iPhone 4, which was the first one they released in 2010. I guess the iPhone 4 wasn't their first. It was their middle one. The point is, that's even a lie right there. Uh, also, Amazon uh, just uh, patented shipping items before they are even ordered uh, by the anticipation package shipping with algorithms to know what you're going to buy before you buy it. See, this is knowing the future before it even happens. So it's not just the government. It's all these groups spying, folks. You're like, well, what do I have to hide? That's like posting where you live and what you got for Christmas on Facebook, and then you go on a trip. I just got this new TV or this new computer. By the way, I'm going on a seven-day cruise tomorrow. They rob you. The globalists are bad. You have privacy to protect yourself from bad people. Oh, it makes me angry. It makes me so incredibly angry that all of this is going on. And, and look, it's Pandora's box. They have all this advanced technology. Sure, you can use it to corner markets and dominate. But I, I saw a movie, I think it was called, what was the movie where he gets hired, but they erase your memory uh, after, selectively, after you've worked on a project because it's so secret. These tech companies don't want you selling it to somebody else. And it's based... It's paycheck based on a Philip K. Dick book. You're right. And in it, they learn it's a lensing technology that the Defense Department was buying 
to see into the future over the horizon uh, using quantum mechanics, but instead it's a co corporation using it to know how to corner markets, but it centralizes power so quickly it causes a nuclear war on the end of the planet. And, 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 and by the way, that's Philip K. Dick in the 70s figuring this out. This stuff is going to screw everything up. I remember six years ago reading uh, declassified public source stuff where Google admitted their plan was to be able to tell the future. And back then they had 93% through your searches. They know where you'd eat on a, a month from now before you did. They know all your patterns that you're not conscious of or creatures of habit. And again, you're like, well, so what if they know I go to Billy's Sports Bar? When they get enough data, it's fed into war game computers, and then they know how to shut down businesses in certain areas. They know how to jack up prices on certain things and shut down their competition. I mean, this is really cold-blooded, and their argument is someone's going to adopt this anyway. You're not going to escape innovation. We might as well innovate with a predatory angle and take over because we're the good guys. But they're not the good guys. And that's all I'm telling you is the brakes need to be put on this real quick because it violates common law, it violates common sense, and it's dangerous. Kyle in FEMA Region 4, you're on the air. Appreciate you calling in. Alex, transmitting from FEMA Region 4, how are you, sir? Good, brother. Well, Alex, it's an honor, and I want to take this opportunity to uh, eulogize Aaron Schwartz. Uh, you talk about privacy. Uh, of course, the big frontier for privacy now is on the Internet. And, you know, we lost Aaron last year, January 11, 2013. And Alex, this young man was a prodigy and a titan for liberty, I believe. We all know he founded Reddit, uh, but he also helped invent the RSS feed system, which is an integral part of today's Internet. He was worth a lot of money. He was a real libertarian fighting the tyrants, and he was going to, he was just getting engaged. He said, I'm going to beat this fake charge of getting these MIT documents. And then so they came and killed him and then spun into suicide. Right, right, which I don't buy. And, of course, you're right. I mean, in 2011, right after he led the fight helping to derail SOPA and defend Internet freedom, uh, the DOJ slapped um, 35 years prison charge and $1 million fine on him for downloading some academic documents. And so tying into your point earlier, Alex, I mean, in a system where the Muslim Brotherhood can express walk through airport TSA security and the engineers of the 08 crisis, you know, dine at the White House and of those with, with, with members of Congress, I mean, Schwartz was – facing lifetime in prison, pretty much, just for downloading some documents. That were like three decades old, if I remember, and open source already. He just did it as an act of, uh, a, a, a act of civil disobedience to create a court case he thought he would win. Right, right. Well, even, and he, the, the database from which he downloaded the documents was JSTOR, popular academic, um, you know, journal and, and, and database. And they even released a statement that said, um, we re regret being drawn into this case from the beginning. We settled our civil dispute with Aaron in June 2011, and he returned the data he had in possession. So, I but mean, I'm so going from no memory. I mean, I followed it, but not that close. Wasn't it the data was old, and it wasn't even, it was like publicly paid for, no big deal. I mean, well, what was the whole story behind that? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not too poor with the details, but I know the documents were originally from MIT, and of course, then um, you know what happens is these 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 colleges and these institutions they of course authorize JSTOR to house the documents. And then once once a, once a company like JSTOR has them, they're they're open to the public. Now JSTOR charges a fee; you have to be kind of a member to to have access to their documents. Yeah, and that's what he was angry about. Now uh, you just reminded me that this was publicly paid for, but had been made for a for profit thing. Right. Right. So, I mean, you know, maybe they have some kind of legal angle on that, but, I mean, 35 years in prison and a million-dollar fine, I mean, obviously that's out of proportion. And here you have JSTOR, the, um, I mean, the, the entity that should be on the prosecution side, and, I mean, they didn't really care. They didn't have a problem with it. So it was, it was clearly a hatchet job, a persecution job. And the reason why I want to highlight Schwartz, Alex, is because he really reminds me of the spirit of the founding fathers. The founders talked about um, having an elite of virtue and talent lead the country. And, you know, a lot of people are very talented, but, you know, uh, kids are, are corruptible and aren't as virtuous. And a lot of people they are, maybe are more virtuous, but don't have the skills and talents, which, I mean, not that I do. But, I mean, you know, Aaron, he was a kid. He was a very young man. He's well accomplished, obviously a prodigy. And, I mean, he, he instead of just basking in the riches and the fame that, that he had and, and could have had more of, I mean. Instead of selling out to the system. He just said, no, it's about being virtuous, and they took him out. Great points. No, I hear you. 
Take a look at Mark Zuckerberg for for a parallel example. Then went the other way. I mean, he could have been the next Mark Zuckerberg, maybe not as big, but you know, just he just could have joined the establishment and lived on Easy Street for a while, and he didn't do that. So, I mean, I want to use Aaron's like sort of the anniversary here of of the persecution of Aaron as so called suicide, which I don't buy. Uh, to sort of, I guess, call out people. I mean, if you're someone and you're listening to the show, I know you have a lot of folks, Alex, that maybe are powerful and are people of means and kind of sit behind the scenes. I mean, right now, we need you guys. And, I mean, we'll try to support Exactly. You I got to jump to get to the other people, but you made some great points. Thanks for the call. Last week, we had the think tank Extraordinary Crisis needed to preserve New World Order. Author of Shock and Awe Doctrine says elite threatened by non-state actors like Edward Snowden. They go on to say in there, empowered individuals have to be eliminated. They're afraid of individuals. That means even in the elite. See, folks, this, this is about the end of free will. This is the opposite of liberalism, folks. Political correctness. Andrew Cuomo, the governor, saying, if you're pro-life or pro-gun, get out of the state. That's not what New York State's about. He defines what it's about. And then once they've done that, they rule you. These are dangerous people. Let's go ahead and talk to Michael in Arizona. Thanks for holding her on the air. Hello, Alex. Hey, buddy. Hey, good afternoon. Um, first of all, I've never been a Star Trek fan, but that is an excellent video. I have a real brief statement to make, but um, afterwards, before you hang up on me, I'd like to submit a prayer request. Um, something the governor said earlier, I don't remember his exact words, but I've been saying this for quite some time. I don't sugarcoat things. I speak my mind, whether I talk to somebody face-to-face on the phone, on Facebook, or whatever, they say, you shouldn't be saying things like that. They might hear you. And my response is usually, I hope they're listening to me because I want them to know what i got to say. And that's my point, you know. I, I, I hope they know what my feelings are. Well, here's what they're doing. They're giving the, the NSA secret intel to larger and larger circles of operatives, corporate operatives, police operatives, you name it, foundation operatives, where they're going to be using data limited data, it won't be the full data, against you locally. This is for political upper hand to take over, brother. Go ahead and make your point. Yeah, well, I say, I, I say let them have at it. Anyhow, the prayer request I'd like to submit is um, tomorrow is one, at, one year anniversary from when my daughter went to meet the Lord. Oh, my and God. I just want to reach out to yourself, all your staff, and all your listeners um, to say prayers. For her and myself, I've, I've sought grief, grief counseling, and I won't be alone tomorrow. I'll be around a, a lot of What was her name? Jessica. How, how did she die? Accidental overdose on prescription medications. Um, she went by Jessie Mate. That's what she liked to be called. Good God. All right, brother. Thank you so much. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I've... I mean, you say pray for her. I mean, what 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 should we pray for for? Just pray for peace and pray for Oh, me. in her name, in her name. I, yeah, for all the innocents that have gone, yeah. I hear you. That's why I appreciate you. That's why I just want to be a very moral person is because I really see how it affects people when you make unmoral decisions. And, and I just, I want to make the world a better place. And it hurts really bad to see people using the technology of lies, deceit, disinfo. I see people all the time, too. If they want to do something bad to somebody, they will make something up about that person that they've done so that they can then say you're bad so they can do bad things to you. And it, it's, it's just so many people that are evil don't even know they're evil. It's very frustrating. It's very scary. It's important that, you know, a dad talks about his daughter. It's important we remember people. We don't just shovel somebody in their grave and forget about them. I feel a connection to my ancestors, even though I don't know most of their names. Let's talk to Richard in Missouri. You're on the air. Thanks for holding. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. I just want to thank you for the great amount of information you've given me, given me to research and Please, no more thinking, as they say, dittos. What kind of dog is that? Right over here on the other. Just a second, Alex. I got somebody at the door. <laughs> um, I'll keep keep an eye out for him. Yeah. 
my name and numbers on the back there. He's a seven-year-old brown boxer. There's a picture of him there. Let me show you a picture here right quick. I love this. Somebody's at his door wanting to know where their dog is. <laughs> yeah, I live the house is your way. The guy's still talking? Right on the other side of the fence, right by the storage unit in the corner here. So you're the closest one to him. Okay. Last place you're seeing, I have muddy paw prints over there. Is he friendly? He's very friendly. He sleeps. There he is with a three-year-old and an 18-month-old. Like He sleeps with her every day. Hey, you want to tell this guy he's on the radio? Yeah, he's eight years old. He doesn't have I'm on the radio right now, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, I have been aware of the problems going on since I was a teenager. I'm 56 now. So you've been a thought and criminal I, for a long time. Yes, I have. I've been treated as such by the way, many times, but anyway, uh, what would happen if we were somehow to get, turn the tools of the NSA against them and they were suddenly to see themselves on computers and on their viewers, them being... They would call that criminal felony hacking and invasion of privacy and throw you under the prison. Well, wouldn't that be great? Well, yeah, no, that's the essence of tyranny, again, is that they can do it to us, we can't do it to them. I hear you, and I appreciate your call, brother. Hope your neighbors... Uh, what's your neighbor want to do with the brown boxer? Was he telling you that he that he had seen his dog had been on your property, or what's happening? He's gone. I want to hear about that brown boxer. <laughs> I'll have to do a little bit of overdrive, because i got to air this David Knight piece during the main broadcast coming up in the next segment. We'll do a little bit of overdrive and go to Jim, Tim, Kevin, and Ed if i got time. Uh, but, uh, man, I tell you, it, it's just we're living in the middle of incredible times. I don't want to hear anybody say we should be bored because living is an incredible experience, even if it's, if it's tough sometimes. They beat him bloody and arrested him because they're just waiting for someone, whether you're deaf or mentally ill or whatever, or don't speak the language, to not do what they say because, uh, well, you might get to kill somebody. But, again, the establishment's above the law. It's all about us doing what we're told. This is a criminal takeover. And you're going to find out, all you cops that go along with this, you're going to find out. You're going to find out. Uh, here's a guy that, uh, on record, bombed police. And, uh, you know, his organization, the Weatherman, uh, killed uh, people. And then he got a get-out-of-jail-free card because Bill Ayers, on record, works for big major foundations that Obama's and Tim Geithner's family work for. And uh, so they're above the law. And they get to have earrings and dress all trendy. And everyone thinks how great they are when they're monsters. They work for the big offshore banks to collectivize and break this country. And don't worry, they're winning. They probably will destroy everything. So here you go, ladies and gentlemen. Here is uh, Bill Ayers. The accusation that to establish your society that you would put people in a re-education camp. Yeah, say it again. That to establish your society, you put people in a re-education camp. Larry that's Larry Grothwell. Yeah, Larry Grothwell, yeah, right. No, nothing that's, like it. That's no, David Knight. Nothing was Nothing. Ever said. But I was thinking about our conversation um, uh, this morning because, you know, I, I realized that I didn't fully understand. I still don't fully understand where you're coming from, but... Um, you know, the, the idea, I'm sure you're for certain kinds of things about government, right? <laughs> I want to be left alone. I don't want to use government exactly. to solve anything. So yeah. you don't want roads. Bill Ayers has a red so star on I'm a shirt. I'm a big fan of government, and I don't know why you guys would paint me that way. Categorically tonight. Categorically. Categorically. Said, never okay. said anything of the sort. And Larry Grathwell, except in some fever swamp when she went through the rabbit hole, he has some credibility. What credibility does he have? He calls himself an FBI agent. He wasn't an FBI agent. No, no. He no, never called himself I, that. He, just, he has no credibility at all. He was a paid snitch. And but because of the violence, up. because of the violence was happening at the time, because... What violence? Bombings, that sort of thing, because... You mean the bombings of Vietnam? You mean 6,000 people No, I mean, being your killed? bombings. Oh, wait, I mean, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. You, because you're, of yours, they had... Larry Grathwald was a Green Beret in Vietnam and then infiltrated these pieces of trash as organization. Also, whenever, the, whenever communists and Marxists take over, we have necklacing, we have mass murder, we have re-education Whenever re capitalists camps. take over, we have torture, we have re-education camps. We By the way, he died last year. This guy calls him a liar, this sack of crap. It was a war of terror where 6,000 people... American Revolution, they didn't do anything like that, did anybody? Those guys were capitalists. I want you to imagine sitting in a room with 25 people, most of which have graduate degrees 
from Columbia and other well-known educational centers and hear them figuring out the logistics for the elimination of 25 million people. And they were dead serious. 6,000 people a week. Oh, I'm not, I would never, I would never So when you talk about the violence of those days, I hope you're talking about that. About yeah, John think, McCain, the terrorist. Oh yeah, I agree, okay, I agree. Thank you. But, That's all but I, wanted to do. I think, you know, I think it was counterproductive to, to do violence here because I think it galvanized the middle class to think these guys are right. I don't, I don't see where the evidence of that is. That's an interesting theory. Where's your evidence of that? A lot you mean, you of, mean a lot of a middle lot of class people, would say, uh, if, well, if we got people who are avowed Marxists that evidence? are bombing... Where's your Folks, we're so out of time on this video. We're going to post this with my commentary that we just did live on air, but we're also going to post the full video without my commentary uh, up on the YouTube channel right now. All right, well, you know, we'll air on the Nightly News tonight, and then we'll post that tomorrow for everybody else, but it'll be at prisonplanet.tv at uh, 7 o'clock tonight. We'll, we'll air that, but I, you know, I want to make some comments on Bill Ayers. I mean, by the way, uh, the man he was talking about that exposed them and infiltrated them, Larry Rathwald, who just died last year. Uh, he never said he was an FBI agent. I mean, just Ayers is a lying pig with a red star on his shirt saying he's an anarchist. Ed, New York, thanks for holding. You're on the air worldwide in overdrive. Go ahead, sir. Uh, hello, Mr. Alex Jones. This is Ed Cole from FEMA Region 2. All right, buddy. What's on your mind today? All right. Just wanted to give a shout out that uh, here on Long Island, we had the annual Save Long Island Forum, and we had some really profound speakers, Edward Griffin, Sheriff Mack. Chris Ann Hall, Miller, you know, check it out. Charlotte Isabee and even Adam Kokesh, man, this was great. He, he came down. That's fantastic. But, what uh, do you think of your governor um, saying gun owners and, and, and pro-lifers aren't welcome in the state? Well, I think he should check out communist China where you're uh, not allowed to bear arms. Where uh, Yeah, I love how they always tell us that for everybody's force. freedom that we should leave the country. Now, how about you get out, Cuomo? Go ahead. Well, yeah. So I just wanted to summarize the uh, main the main lesson that I that I gathered from this convention that we had, and that's how we actually can take on the globalists using the system that's already in place, and that starts at the local and county level. And programs like uh, from the globalists, like UN Agenda Twenty One, they recognize that is at the local level where they're threatened the most. That's right. We need to get people to run for local office and go to the meetings. Absolutely, folks. That's where the fight is. And uh, like Sheriff Max said, uh, your local sheriff, a constitutional sheriff, he can make all of Washington irrelevant through just through applying the Ninth and Tenth Amendments of the Constitution, the residual reserved powers of the states and the people. But um, that's what I just wanted to... That was the main, that's what I gathered from it. Uh, before I go, I just want to say uh, the previous caller, uh, or the one before that, uh, his daughter Jessica, my, my prayers absolutely go with you. And your father, he truly loves you. And I hope that, I hope that, you know. Absolutely. Empathy is the key to everything. I appreciate you calling. By the way, I didn't get to this yesterday. I noticed it's on Drudge. I should have. Uh, America's number one prescription sleep aid could trigger zombies, murder, and other disturbing behavior. Ambien is becoming better known for triggering bizarre behavior than it is for treating insomnia. And remember last year, the guy that went into Walmart, maybe two years ago now, in Austin, and just for no reason was walking around with a gun and then shot the cop that walked in in cold blood? It turned out he was on Ambien and other stuff, and his, and his roommate would say that he would... Not know who he was. Some, I mean, of course. I mean, as soon as I heard he was like a zombie and just shot the cop and didn't know who, who he was. I'm not. I mean, how do you put that guy in jail? It's like the Sergeant Bales that went and killed the 18 people in Afghanistan. He was on a bunch of that stuff too. I mean, you know, I mean, it's just like I mean, it's just, I mean, I'm just, and they still won't say the drugs are bad. They'll put you in jail, and they're putting kids on stuff like this. Let's talk to Tim in California. Final caller I have time for. Sorry to Jim and Jay and uh, Truth Seeker. You can call me back tomorrow and I'll get to you. Tim, uh, what's your take on all this? Alex, I'm a big supporter, Alex. I'm a Marine for 15 years and a former cop in Los Angeles. Hey, all I got to say is I support you, brother. 
Well, I appreciate you. What do you think about the state of the world? I mean, are you feeling the dread and doom like I am and everybody else I talk to is? I feel it, Alex, but I think we're going to overtake it. I don't think it's going to overtake us, Alex. We're, we're too good. You know, I was talking to one of my friends last night. He said that evil people are freaking out, which they are, and that we're picking up on the fact that they're they're freaking out. What do you think? I totally agree with that analysis, Alex. I think in the long run, we're going to overtake this. Uh, these global elitists, uh, President so-called uh, Barry Sotero, I think all this is going to come out in the wash. It's, it's going to be nasty, but I think we're going to overtake it, Alex. With guys like you and me, I think we can do this. All right, be safe. Good to hear from you. Again, I'm sorry the other callers. I'm out of time. i got a ton of stuff i got to do. Nightly news tonight is going to be very important. 7 o'clock Central, Prison Planet. Dot TV or InfoWarsNews.com and the free podcast and, and the free video feed and all that's at InfoWars.com forward slash show. So spread that link out to everybody.